Zambia is proud to host the 15th OIC Summit on the 4th and 5th May 2024, the second largest gathering of world leaders, kings, presidents, rulers, prime ministers, along with delegates from 57 member countries of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, will gather in our beloved nation for this historic event. The theme of the summit is enhancing unity and solidarity through dialogue for sustainable development. It's a platform to foster cooperation, promote peace and drive sustainable development across the Ummah and the world at large. We call on all Gambians to unite and support the government as it strives to host a memorable and successful event. Let's showcase our hospitality, culture and the beauty of the Gambia to the world. Join us in making history. Let's stand together, united as one, to ensure the 15th OIC Summit in the Gambia is an event to remember. Together, we can make a difference. Now, I'm not to go to the house. I'm going 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 to go to the house. i to go to the house. i this is not a yona wallet or one. Yellan come a soto. Ela wallet or one. I cannot lock on down all day. Cabu yuna wallet and I can't tell lay who can number one funnily. I was on the island of Bulupodo. Nail a mobile scan. Yo, science, eh? Is a marble okay? What a man, dear. What a central cake for a lever. Go back here and the balance. Is in your local. The central yona enterprise. What a what? And you are yona wallet or one. If the land comes to Kaila wallet or one. Alina, not a funny you, not in by Altan, Cassandi Roche, you not be the photo. Alina Catanin Cook and Tat, Nasula from Lulu, the Sandy Roki, Samaboro for Nankede. More than the other Mukudimabal in Canada.
Hello and welcome to another edition of our show. It's another Thursday and I'm back in the studio, of course, in my 1965 uh, Jufore outfit. Mm -hmm. This with two or three other uh, collections were released last weekend by Jufore, the 1965 signifying our independence. Of course, the Baoba tree, we all know the Baoba traditional tree, mm -hmm. and also Sunjata Keta, the warrior. So these were the three brands that were released uh, last weekend, and I want to thank my brother Musa for always, always uh, sending us the piece of the collection. Thank you very much, Musa. And today I have with me Angulare. Angulare, welcome back to the show. We were supposed to have you two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, yes. But here Thank you me. are. Welcome back to the show. Thank you, Fatu. It's good to be back. Uh, Angulare, um, today I want us to look at, you know, what when I wanted us to have a conversation was looking at what the minister, the, for, uh, the central bank governor, mm -hmm. they had a press conference um, and they talked about the state of our economy. I yeah. did look at it with um, Dr. Gajigo and Mane, but I also wanted to have your opinion on the press conference. We will also look at the National Assembly. The, uh, the minister was there. Mm. We saw some of very interesting revelations coming out from there and some of the bills that were also tabled. Uh, first, uh, let's look at the, um, the state of our economy. You watch the governor's uh, press conference. Press conference, yes. What is your take on that? Our Dallas is depreciating, I think, 14.2 against the CEFA, mm -hmm. um, against the dollar, against all major currencies, currencies yes. as we speak. Uh, inflation is high. It's not going down. Yeah. Uh, we are in the Ramadan. Food prices are rocketing. What's your state, um, your observation? What is the state of our economy, in your opinion? Well, Father, thank you very much, uh, and um, again, good evening to your to your viewers and listeners. Uh, I was stunned by the governor's press conference. Mm. Stunned in the sense that um, uh, the inflation figures that uh, he is he released mm -hmm. uh, do not, in reality. Uh, match with what I am facing as a consumer mm. at the marketplace. I'm not talking about other people. I'm talking about me. I and me too. Yeah. yeah. So, so to say that the inflation rate of inflation has decreased by one percent, whether it's nominal or real mm -hmm. uh, reduction in the rate of inflation, begs the question: What happened to the notion that the inflation, our actual inflation rate, real inflation rate, is around eighteen percent? How how do you reconcile how those, do you reconcile that those figures? Yeah, um, uh, I I don't want to second guess the governor and his team. Yeah, uh, but these are questions that people are asking, mm -hmm. and it's a question that I ask myself. Uh, mm -hmm. If if uh, inflation is reducing mm -hmm. at the levels that the governor says they are re they are being reduced, I'm not feeling it in my pocketbook. Yeah. Uh, what are the so that brings to my question? What are the compositions used? Is it the market prices or what? Because as we speak, mano da gena seletale, sukuro da seletale, everything man femanji. So how do we calculate fungana to the point ko inflation or digital by a certain percentage, one point something, from twenty three to twenty one point something? I don't know. And frankly, I don't know how they came up with the numbers. The numbers. Okay. Well, and Nanko, I was stunned by it. Mm -hmm. Now, ntenga doko ke banko lo menu kang ni be economic data release la. The carries car release le with real figures. Okay. Uh, the data is analyzed, mm -hmm. and and the, that, that analysis takes them to an interpretation of the behavior of the economy. Yeah. Uh, but the color of inflation is reduced by X percentage points. Uh, when even the external development partners are saying inflation is around 18.5%, mm. begs the question, how did you arrive at those figures? Now, in terms of the graph that he presented, mm -hmm. you, you could see the, the nominal rise in, inf in the rate of inflation, both real and nominal. Mm -hmm. And you could also see uh, the point that he's making to say it, 
inflation has been reduced by 1%. Mm -hmm. But inflation being reduced by 1% begs the question, why are uh, commodities increasing exponentially? Mm. And I'm using exponentially uh, very conservatively. Yeah. Uh, so so you cannot reconcile the two. And I think they need to come up with a better way of informing uh, economic actors what the economy is doing. Bring us, you know, the first time I came here, I said, uh, we have to go back to the economic fundamentals. Mm -hmm. And I listed those fundamentals. Yes. And I also said that we have to be more transparent with the data that we present mm -hmm. in order to buttress our arguments and viewpoints. Mm -hmm. um, this, this government is not very good at transparency. Mm -hmm. They are not very good at releasing uh, data, uh, macroeconomic data. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't talk about our terms of trade. They don't talk about our balance of payments. We hear uh, our reserves are around three months uh, uh, per year. I mean, give us the figures. Yeah. Let us let us analyze them and come to our own conclusion. Conclusion that this is between than, three yeah, to six feeding, months. Yeah. Feeding us whatever. Personally, I would like to know what our terms of trade is because when you look at the the movement of the Dallas versus the the SEFA, mm -hmm. and I'm using SEFA because now SEFA has become our second biggest currency in this country. Yes. Uh, but also against the pound sterling, the 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 U.S. dollar and the euro, mm -hmm. you, you, realize, you realize that um, the value of the dollar has depreciated significantly. Against all, against all the all major, currencies. major currencies. Yes. All major currencies. So, so I'm saying, mm -hmm. give us the actual numbers on our balance of payments. Mm -hmm. Give us uh, an actual number on our terms of trade. Yeah. Uh, give us actual numbers in terms of what the economy is producing. Because if we, if we cannot even defend what the economy is producing, uh, you end up being where we are, literally. And that is three aspects of our country's economy mm -hmm. is driving the country. Yeah. One is loans. We are taking loans all over the place, yeah. uh, both domestic and international. Our, doc our domestic debt. Yeah. Uh, the government domestic debt rose by 8.4% yep. to 41.3 billion, mm -hmm. according to, uh, accounting for 29% of the GDP. GDP. This represents an increase of 3 billion mm. from 38.18 reported year. in 2022. Yeah. 3 billion yeah. extra. So we are taking loans, and the loans are both domestic and foreign. Yeah. And uh, the borrowing part is, pa is part of the, the thing. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the, 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 the issue of uh, how, how, how do you utilize those borrowed funds? Mm. Are those borrowed funds being funneled into the economy so that they prop up certain aspects of the economy in terms of uh, uh, increasing our, our level of productivity yeah. in the economy? So we, 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 we are at a situation where I even dare to say uh, we are not producing anything. We are importing everything. Now, if you are not producing, you are importing, you cannot have a positive terms of trade mm. in, your, in your economy. We have, to, we have to come to terms with, uh, with, with these economic fundamentals and discuss them openly and come up with ways of how to resolve them. But we are borrowing. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we are getting grants and loans from our development partners. Yeah. And that is what is driving our ec economic activity. But the borrowing and grants. Borrowing and grants. Mm. And that's all. Yeah. But one major thing that will still affect the economy is depreciation how our currency, currency is, depreci is depreciated? The Gambian dollar is um, is depreciated 3.8% uh, uh, against the US dollar, 10.8% yeah. against the pound sterling, 12.7% mm -hmm. against the um, against the pound sterling, mm -hmm. 
and against for, the euro. Against the euro, sorry. Yeah. And 14.2% against the CFR. Yeah. All major currencies. Yeah. How does this affect the price of goods in the country? Does this, you know, translate to what we're seeing in the market right now? It, it drives inflation. Mm. When you when you borrow at levels that we are borrowing, yeah, uh, and you are not producing, yeah, anything, it actually affects the value of your currency. Mm -hmm. It's inflationary. It's like the, the minister of finance needs money. He picks up the phone. He calls the governor of the central bank. He says, "I need X amount of dollars." It is given to him. It's called printing money. Wow. We borrow. We print money and we depend on grants and we expect that to not affect our rate of inflation it it drives our rate of inflation higher than anybody can can tell you now you 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 look at the value of the dollar and you say what kind of policy measures can we uh, adopt exactly that's that, my that, next that question would, that would, that would how do mitigate. we stop this thing how do we mitigate the continuous rise of other currencies against our currency yeah. um, different economies will come up with different answers mm -hmm. my answer is this uh, even those rates uh, exchange rates that you are referring to mm -hmm. they are controlled exchange rates these are rates that the central bank issues mm -hmm. to the commercial banks, yeah. and they, they, they operate on, on, on those basis. What we could do is to consider what we did in 1988-89 mm -hmm. during the ARP, and that is to adopt a flexible exchange rate. It's going to, it's going to be difficult for certain business activities. Mm -hmm. Uh, because the inefficient ones will inevitably be out of business. Yeah. The efficient ones will will survive. But we consideration has to be given to adopting a flexible exchange rate. Consideration has to be given to uh, using palliative measures in order to reduce inflation. And our debt sustainability mm. has to be managed better than uh, we are currently managing it. I think the debt figures, you hear various things. Yeah. Uh, my, my research is based on what I read. And in the, in the documentation that comes out of our development partners, mm -hmm. they, they say our, our, our uh, national stock of debt is around 110 billion. And that is about 85% of our GDP. Yeah. Now, the 25% is what they borrow mm -hmm. and print yeah. and get from grants. So an economy that whose, it, uh, whose uh, value, 85% of whose value is in, in, in their debt portfolio, mm -hmm. begs the question, are we going to negotiate debt sustainability in order A, to prop up the dollar and B, to reduce the rate of inflation? But we know those are very difficult choices mm -hmm. and if the government decides to go that way, if you follow Ghana, yeah. they went through it. And now the economy is moving. It's picking up, yeah. yeah. So, so flexible exchange rate, debt sustainability, reduction of inflation, and diversifying the economy. Hmm. The economic base of this country is not diversified. We are still into you know, small farmer production. Uh, our manufacturing, the last time I checked the numbers, our manufacturing yeah. has contracted by about 35%, which means that we don't manufacture anything. anything. So you have inflation, you have a currency that, whose value is depreciating yeah. every day, and you have an economy that is not diversifying and you are borrowing extensively. These are four deadly combinations that will kill any economy. So we need to, we need to, I keep saying this, mm -hmm. uh, we need to hang heads as a country, as a people, to tackle these issues. Uh, politics aside. Do you see any policy direction that shows that we can do it? Do you see the political will? Do you <coughs> see any policy direction that says that you think is, is going to help redirect the path that our economy is on? No. 
I, I, I don't see it. I'm not saying they are not doing it, mm -hmm. but I'm not seeing the effects. Okay. The effects are not visible to me. They may be visible to somebody or some of your viewers may uh, come up with ideas, but I'm not seeing it. Yeah. And that is why you, when you go to the marketplace, you suffer. Because the, the, the economic instability is transmitted into the marketplace, and that also affects the, 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 the price of the goods and services that we require. Because the reason why I ask that also, um, because, you know, recently, before this press conference, there was a time the governor said, um, you know, one of their core mandates, of course, is to make so, you know, inflation and poor... Um, is the stabilized prices in the market and all the stuff. So they, they, you know, one of the press conferences, the governor even said, if they had not interjected, if they had not intervened, intervened uh, the price, we would not be able to even buy rice in this country. The reason why we are buying it at this is because they had intervened. I know one of the things that they did was to um, to to do tax waiver yeah. for food commodities yes. and subsidize, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people that are bringing food, rice, and other you know, commodities don't pay taxes on that. Yeah. I, Customs I, duty, I, I yeah. am against that because we are still not feeling the uh, no. price reduction. So I don't know how is that stabilizing. I don't know what the world market is, but if it is, maybe it is, but it doesn't reflect what I'm buying in the market. Mm. But I think the other step that they did was to empower some businessmen yeah. so they can bring in these commodities. And the aim of that was, the objective was to... To, uh, to, to try to mitigate, mitigate the, 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 effect the effect of, of this inflation, inflation. spiral. Then. Yes. Yeah. But when that happened, people were asking, can we have the list? Yeah. Because we don't know who, who, who is benefiting and who, from this. what was the process. Mm. We didn't know. Mm. But two, a few days ago, yeah. the minister was questioned. Is it the same thing mm. or was it a different one? The one that the minister said they had given 50 million to a jar oil. I, I think it, there are two different There are two issues. different ones. Yes. But let's start with this one first. What the one the minister said, uh, the, the central governor, mm. said, bank governor said, they, they, they were doing that. But yeah. no, but number one, I think what you said is the transparency issue here. Yeah. Um, no one knows who the complete list is that. Who, and how much each one of them got. were giving mm -hmm. and what, at what rate are they paying yeah. and at what is the grace period are they even paying. Nobody knows. So there's, a, there's a, this issue of number one transparency there, but also how has that policy really affected, affected the lives of, the, lives of the ordinary Gambians? Yeah. Because the money is our money, all of us. The 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 two are dif two different issues. Okay. The the waiver of customs dues on imported foodstuffs. Yeah. If I recall correctly, was done in uh, 2018-2019. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes, the waiver. Yes, yes, yes. yes. That was when it was given. Mm -hmm. Now, the question then becomes: To what extent has that affected the lowering of our inflation rate or mm -hmm. has actually resulted to an increase in our rate of inflation. Yeah. Now, if you, if you are somebody who keeps tap on the movement of prices, mm -hmm. you will say that uh, it, had, it had no effect. Mm -hmm. This was done in 2018-19. Mm -hmm. Now, that's uh, almost five years now. Yeah. And people are not feeling uh, the effects of whether or not they are being protected from uh, uh, exponential increases in the price of basic basic commodities. Yeah. So that 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 hasn't happened. Mm -hmm. And then if you are somebody who is uh, uh, mm -hmm. critically looking at this thing, you would say, but what is the point mm -hmm. in giving them this facility because it's not translating into a reduction of prices Pricing. or a reduction in the rate of inflation. Mm -hmm. Then this question of uh, uh, the $50 million that, that you are talking about, the second issue. Yeah. Now, I was stunned when I heard that. $50 million loan. $50 million loan. Dollar loan that the country contracted and guaranteed. And give it to a private business yes. man. Um, don't, don't get me. It, it it happens. It happens. Okay. It happens. Okay. But not at the levels we are seeing. Okay. 
um, if the intention, according to what was said in the floor of parliament, yeah. if the intention was to help uh, bring down the prices of mm -hmm. uh, basic commodities, then it should have been issued, used to cover more ground than just one individual. Mm -hmm. And then the question then becomes that one individual that you gave 50 million US dollars to, uh, and that 50 million, if I am right, if I if I if I am uh, right, uh, correct correct me if I am wrong, that 50 million is is almost three billion, it's three hundred three point four billion billion Ghanaian dollars to three, one person. Three point four one. Last June, the National Assembly approved a 50 million loan agreement um, between the Gambia government and the Arab Bank, Arab, Beda. Arab uh, Beda, right? Mm -hmm. To embark to support government businesses involved in importation of food Foodstuff. and other cost, uh, commodities uh, to, uh, to ease price pressures in the market. Yeah. But the first, the first red flag there is we all know ja oil is one of the most successful businessmen but what we know they're involved in fuel and fuel cement. and cement yeah we have never heard of ja oil being involved in food commodities in yeah. that scale yeah where are the other uh, businesses that are involved in the food scale and what 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 was the uh, criteria used to, to select, select yeah. that, no, nothing against Jia oil, but these are the questions no. that any ordinary government will ask. For, for me, uh, I don't have issues with Jia oil. Yeah. They saw an opportunity, economic I will opportunity, grab it. they grab they it. Grab it yeah. uh, the question we should be asking is what the criteria was yes. for that money to be given to anybody, not mm -hmm. just Jia oil, but to anybody. And then the second question is, what were you thinking when you negotiated that loan mm -hmm. that you're going to make the condition so stiff that 90% of your business people cannot meet that condition? What were you thinking when you are negotiating that? If you are, if you are negotiating a loan with a view to helping small businesses mm -hmm. grow, you know that you put a cap on how much they can borrow mm -hmm. and you put a... You put a, a, a uh, conditions that they can they can uh, bring up with in terms of guaranteeing mm -hmm. how they are going to pay in that uh, pay in that loan and the the time frame for payment of that uh, mm -hmm. that loan so so that way you help small businesses mm -hmm. you you help uh, uh, struggling businesses that are uh, that are bringing in some of this stuff at, mm -hmm. at high cost to them. They are not benefiting from these government programs. Now, if, if you are going to be a, a, a radical policy person, you could say, okay, let's use part of this to create youth cooperatives, women's groups, in order to help them produce for the economy. But this 50 million that you gave to Jawel, it's not going to affect our food it's not going to bring down the cost of our uh, uh, food prices yeah it is not going to be used to produce to produce locally those food items that you can say gambia is producing a b c d e mm. whereas if you go to the rural communities and you organize women and youth groups whatever they produce is pro being produced here they make they create wealth for themselves mm -hmm. but you are already creating wealth for a wealthy person or a wealthy entity. And this is what a lot of people cannot wrap their heads around. Jawel, I have no issues with them whatsoever. Uh, if I was them and I saw this I'll opportunity, take the opportunity yeah. I will take it. But it's up to government to put uh, in place a system that everybody benefits from an activity. Uh, and, and you can go to the extra length of identifying the most vulnerable people in the business community and help them with with startup capital or you recapitalize them is it because of the conditions of the loan because um, as per the conditions you have to pay 48 million per administrative charges but you I know you work in the international communities I've always mm -hmm. said this um, they they come with these loans or grants and they have conditions but are you not able to negotiate those for example, that 50 million could have been negotiated, the conditions could have been negotiated, and that money could have been divided into so many other businesses 
that could use to to be able to help young Gambians. But that was my that was my point. Yeah. What were they, those who negotiated for that loan? Mm -hmm. What were they thinking? Uh, saying in order for you to qualify for this, you have to cough off forty-eight million dollars. How many businesses can fork up forty-eight million dollars in this country? To, in this country, to guarantee a loan like that. This is what I, why I said earlier. What were they thinking? If if it is to proper big businesses, I can understand. Yeah. But according to this, yeah, you are going to give loans to people who bring in food stuff. Food stuff. And your ultimate objective is to uh, reduce the prices of commodities at the market and thereby reducing inflation. Yeah. If that is the so, then this is not going to do it. So meaning the objective itself is defeated? That's, that's why I asked the question. What were they thinking? Negotiating a loan like that, with conditions like that. Approved by our National Assembly? Yes. So what are the risks involved in this? It's like the country is guaranteeing a loan, a loan for a private business. Businessman, yes. Fifty million, three point yeah. nine billion. That is the same price as the Banjo Road project. Exactly. Around that. Exactly. <laughs> what are the risks involved? I wish they can they can guarantee something like that for me. But yeah, what are the risks involved in for, as a country? You remember considering our debt. Uh, debt portfolio. Portfolio mm. right now. Yeah, and uh, our the interest payments on our on our loans, the interest payments on that one hundred and ten billion. Yeah. Is seven billion per annum. Per annum. That seven billion, is more than the total budget allocations of agriculture, health, and education. And you add this to that. And you add this to that. If it is not part of that, you add this to that, then you are talking a different ball game. Now, um, by by my count, mm -hmm. uh, if you if this was added to what we already have, mm -hmm. you're going to have to say that our uh, the percentage of uh, GDP that is devoted to loans is around 90, 91 percent. Mm -hmm. So, it's not going to happen. the 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 objective itself is questionable, mm -hmm. uh, and. It, I'm, I'm talking in terms of hindsight, not being privy to what to details, happened. Yeah. Uh, but what we are given, uh, it's a the it's minister a huge himself risk. could not tell us what process was used. He said yeah. he only said oh, it was done he, at the Ministry of, Ministry Trade. of Trade. So yeah. he's just pushing it yeah. back to the Ministry yeah. of Trade. Yeah. Because of course, I'm sure there was no transparent process. That, it, that that happened during the process. You, you know, you talk about the risk to the country. The risk that is very very important. This is sad. Yeah. It's it's really sad. Uh, it's sad because if this individual defaults, mm -hmm. the government picks up the tab. Who is the government? You and I. Our tax money will be used to pay for a percent a potential defaulting loan. The next question then becomes. What are the terms of payments for this loan? And for how long? That, that jar, jar oil has been contracted, and for how long? What are the interest payments? Who pays for interest payment? Us or the jar oil? It needs to be... You take a loan. The government signed for the loan. Oh. If there are interest payments, this is a beta thing. There may not be, because Islamic banking, there yeah. may not be any interest rates. Okay. But if there are interest rates to be paid, the contracting party pays those interest rates. In this case, the government of the Gambia is liable for the interest payments. If it gives these loans to Jar Oil, then Jar Oil is responsible for passing. The government will pass those interest rates to Jar Oil if they included it in the contract. If, that is if. If. That is if. I, I'm assuming that good business practice suggests that government takes a loan from Beda at a certain rate of interest. It, it contracts it, signs it. If it gives it to Fatuture or La Resise or Ja Oil, the same conditions must be passed on to, to, the, yeah. to the new contractee. But the risk is still there. The risk is still there. If, if that individual defaults, it becomes our issue as a country. 
especially the, uh, this magnitude of the loan of this magnitude. And I'm sure this is not going to be a five year loan or 10. Well, this is something that you're talking about in a number of years. And it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, 3.4 billion. It's a, it's a lot of money. Um, to just give to one To business. just give to one person. Um, you, you know, you know, Fatu, um, this morning I, I got, uh, I was going to wait until the end of this to say, but this is, the mm -hmm. calls were in, in relation to this issue. Yeah. I got calls from three different religious leaders. One of them says to me, are you aware of this uh, loan that the government gave to Jar Oil? Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, I have heard it. Mm -hmm. I don't know the details. He says, okay, uh, mm -hmm. since you guys go to these platforms to talk, yeah. can you talk about this thing so that those of us who are not educated in the in the in, uh, Western way, yeah. can comprehend what happened, how it happened, wow. why it happened. I that me. That's all I want to know. And when so that when I preach in my mosque, I'm going to be telling them this is what the government says. I said to him, I I cannot give you that kind of precise information, but I will raise it. And then another person calls me and says, but why give that particular loan to that particular person? What was the process? And what I told you is what I told that religious leader. I said, you know, transparency is a problem. The way this thing happened, even the minister could not answer some of the questions that your elected National Assembly members were asking. Were asking. Mm -hmm. He says it, it, the Ministry of Trade is responsible for the transaction. Mm -hmm. So he says to me, tell them to bring the two ministers in the National Assembly. Let them tell us how they gave, they contracted 50 million in our names. Another person, the third one that called me. Oh, I'm sorry, 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 i Akonya konyi million dollar million talulo men dita nyin. Gambia kodo to jollem. That's when I decided to take my calculator and go. I realized mm -hmm. that it was about three point four billion dollars. Mm -hmm. Now the, the the challenge I had was to translate three point four billion dollars in the mm -hmm. mandinka to him. Yeah. Akatale ngafa akonya nga understand. But we mfana ye fifty million loan dollar to. Dollar <laughs> one. You know, I about Alman Tilling, Al Dukara Al Tilling, Al Tilling, Membe Kering Al Yafony, Tumandova to Hanin Nalman Dakor Barninga along Dalilo Meat in Naketa. We will be able to comprehend, comprehend. and we will be able to live with it. And Umimu, um, for me, the, the challenging thing for me in this whole thing is they said this is for businesses that bring in, import in basic, import commodities. basic commodities. Yes. Number one red flag. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oil long. Ni tofa mo ja oil. Cemento mo le long. Ani fuelo. Um. Ni ka food commodities fananke not in any large scale. Yeah. yeah. To warrant government to give, give them, them 3.4 billion, billion dollars. Mm. It's mind boggling. When you have other importers in the country, Minialonko, they are struggling. Nia will support with at least a quarter of that money, including jar oil, you are uplifting a whole mass. Yeah. Number one, they will be so warandilale. Number two, it made a business so conole. It will achieve left them achieve like a world price you'll, stability. You'll, you'll achieve so often achieve no jay. But it's a 3.4 billion will be the more killing. Me along the margin of business so conno follow. I mean, yeah. Uncle Larry. It's, it's questionable. And um, we. 
it, it's questionable. It is very, very questionable. But but let's look at it also mm -hmm. from the point of view of uh, what what effect is this thing having on the things that it was contracted for? Okay, have they started? When was the, what was this? Well, actually? this is this is the issue. Now, Ika Kuma ah. This was done in 2022, and but, this came out in 2023. Yes, but when in B tema, when in B tema, funga importation je wala karola. Yes, funga jele ko they are they are even diversifying their their business into importing food, food items. items. Because you know, I said borrowing the instability of the value of the dalasi, mm -hmm. uh, the rate of inflation, uh, and economic diversification. So you were 2022 lady? Well, Okay. I am not sure. You're not sure, okay. Uh, it could be earlier, Okay. It but sign now, Fintita. Fintita. Uh, and this is why I started by saying the, the transparency issue is, is the Achilles heel of this, this government. I keep saying it and I'll keep saying it. They need to be more transparent with us to say, this is what we are doing. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Or this is what we have done. Mm -hmm. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, this is the because they will understand. Now people are asking, was this recently or a year or two ago? And personally, I have no idea. All I know is this weekly, this thing broke. And it broke because somebody was a national assembly member asked. The national assembly member if was not, we would not have. Otherwise, known. we would not have and, known. And I have said this: the minister of finance. I think he he. Never <laughs> told cool told they they don't feel like they're accountable to anybody. They could just do anything and not let not let the people well, know, and it's okay. And that's not how governments are run. They 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 should be concerned about being accountable to to their voters, to the people, mm -hmm. that is the government. Yeah. Uh, but they should also think and, and comprehend that there will be accountability. Mm. Actually, two accountabilities. Yeah. Accountability, number one, is in this world here. Yeah. What have you done with Jamala Kodo? Mm -hmm. You will have to be held accountable for that. Then, Nifata Fanang, like Karanal Kamemfo, for Alay Nininka, what have you done with Miskino Lakodo? Mm. So for me, those are the two accountabilities that that any government is faced with. But more importantly, governments that do things, whether those things are in the best of the national interest or not, mm -hmm. people don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I I am a firm believer in total transparency in how government is is run. Mm -hmm. um, I have been in sit country situations where the president himself and in most instances the finance minister, the governor of the central bank, will weekly inform people the kind of things that they are doing on behalf of those yeah, people. Yeah, people. Yeah. I have seen that. Now, uh, in my own Gambia, mm -hmm. I cannot expect to have that. Uh, because so far, Kabrinte Nte mm -hmm. in 2016, mm -hmm. uh, ways in which uh, government is consistently informing people in, in terms of the loans they are, mm -hmm. they are contracting, the content of those loans and contracts. Yeah. Hani learning asset recycling. Mm. It's all done hush, 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 hush. Yeah. Now you have to ask yourself this question. Is what they are doing in the best interest of this country? Selling everything. Is that in the best interest of this country? Today the airport is a mess. We have a new ground handling service there. My friend was traveling this, last, uh, this weekend, that's Saturday, on Wednesday, and he was telling me how he spent hours mm -hmm. because there's a new, new ground handling service there. The Gambia International Airlines, our national carrier, they are reduced to just selling air tickets now. Yeah. Ground handling services have been privatized. Mm -hmm. They are now just a private travel agent. Mm -hmm. Ground handling services have been privatized. Mm -hmm. Gumsell, my last show, yeah. 
Uh, there was a cabinet paper that they were selling only 60%. Yeah. But now mm. we're getting information that they're selling 100% of gum cell. Yeah. Gum cell, they're giving away the gum fiber, making yeah. it its own company and taking away everything that gum cell uses to pay salaries after taking the gateway from them. You know, even that gateway shouldn't be at OP. That's what Jamie was doing. Yes. And the commission flagged that. Yes. And we are doing the same thing. Yes. Well, and Nankafo, sometimes in my social media posting, Nankafo, uh, we haven't learned anything. No. Because if we learn something, uh, some of the things that were happening on the Jamie shouldn't be happening on the discussion. But we haven't learned anything. There, my issue is, to what extent all these privatizations serve the best interests of the people of this country? To what extent? To what extent? If those who are buying these companies realize that someday all of this could be undone, mm. why would you buy something that you know or you are being told is not performing? Why are you buying that? Because in other countries, let's just let's just face it. Yeah. Um, a new government comes, they look at all these contracts and vo null nullifies all of them. Even Jame, he sells it to you today yeah. and tomorrow I cancel I Taibu. Cancel. Other countries. Tinubu is doing it in, in, in Nigeria. In, in Nigeria. Uh, the guys in Mali, Guinea and uh, Burkina Faso are doing it. Mm -hmm. So what makes people think that if they buy these assets? Mm -hmm. Now, I, some future government is not going to question why you bought it or why it was sold in the first place. My, my personal view is that when you see a place like Gamtel mm -hmm. uh, going the way it is going, mm -hmm. and I say this all the time, yeah. when you see a company like Gamtel, a parastatal like Gamtel going that way, what you should do is to assess why the company is not making money. Mm -hmm. Gamtel is making money. Gamsel is making money. What is at issue, as far as the audits are concerned, is the bloated stuff that is in there. Yeah. One. No. Two, the, the lifeblood of Gamtel Gamsel is the international gateway. Mm -hmm. You take that from, from them, them, you bankrupt them. Yeah. So you take that from them, you, sold, you, you sell the shell company ostensibly because it is not making any money. Yeah. And also, even that shell company and even Gamtel, you put an embargo on them. They cannot take any loan. Their network is obsolete. Yeah. They cannot do any competition. You tie their hands. You're not injecting money in them. For the past 10 years, no major mm -hmm. development has been done to upgrade their network. They don't have a functional billing system. They have nothing. You, you know, and you expect them to compete with Afrizel and Qzel? You know, you know, Nkafo, I tell people, I say, uh, this, is, this is a very difficult period for some of us. Yeah. Because you know, you know, as a country, as a people, we have highly educated, brilliant people in this country who mm -hmm. can do these things. Yeah. Um, why are we not engaging them? Why, why should we run down a, a state company that was profitable, was making money, and you go and privatize it at a cut rate price? Sell it off. Yeah. Hey, come tell me, can you make for them? Honey, be you mali alone? Yeah, wafi jolle. Ah, I'm a wafi follow the bari. Kwebe hundred percent la wafi. Yes, but who knows First, how much? The cabinet paper was sixty percent. Mm. Ibo le wafi la. Yeah, sign. Bari iko sign hundred percent. Yes. I love to work there. And and I, I I have said this in in another platform. I. You know, I, I, I listed this as far back as last year, March, Nimuato. Mm -hmm. I said, trend-wise, trend-wise, you are, you are faced with a situation where the bridge is going to be recycled. Mm -hmm. I said, the airport is going to be recycled. Yeah. I said, GPA is going to be recycled. The ferry, yes. The ferry services is going to be recycled. Yeah. I said, we may even see a case where Nawek will be recycled oh, wow. and we may see a situation where the airport will be recycled and even the Jawara conference center. All these things you have said apart from the conference center and the um, 
and now it and now it the, all of them all are others, on the shopping block all of them yeah. uh so nga nga fole nna nga, nga fole last year my first appearance on uh, uh, coffee coffee time. time i said it i listed these companies because i looked at the audit reports and i said i i i don't want to come here and say things that I am not sure of. Mm -hmm. So I did my research. I looked at uh, audit reports going back to 2017, mm -hmm. 48 of them. None of those audit reports are clean audits, none. And then when I look at the audits for the parastatals, the auditors comments on NAWEC, the audit auditors comments on GPA, on social security, you realize that we are in trouble. Ah. We are in big trouble because our entities are not performing. And they are not performing because of leakages in them. I don't even want to call it corruption anymore. I call it leakages. leakages. They are leaking. Now, you, you, you wait until an entity leaks itself to death, mm -hmm. or, or in, in layman's time, you bled it to death, and then you sell it to somebody, uh, and that somebody buys it mm -hmm. because it is failing. Then you ask yourself, but why are you buying something that is failing? Mm. What inherent benefits do you have in buying a failing ent enterprise? So, until a solution, I've, I've always been clear about this, until a solution, not personal solution. This is not UDP, this is not politics, this is Larry Sisse talking, mm. thinking. Until a, until, a, until a personal view is, before you go and asset recycle these things, I call it privatization. Mm. Asset recycling is just a fancy English word for, for it. Because even that, when you look at the principles behind asset recycling, mm -hmm. you recycle an entity to in, reinvest that money into another entity to bring it up. But these ones, in the case of the bridge, that's what we know. Yeah. 100 million. Yeah. What is that hundred million going to be spent on? That's hundred million dollars. Yes. But did you hear what the? I mean, it, they said it was. It was injected into personal amendments. I think I saw uh, Mr. Mane was saying something like that here. I saw it. Yeah, but that brings to my next. The minister said, in 2023 and 2024, one billion. Yeah. The bridge raised one, one billion. billion. Yes. I think in three years. Yeah. One billion. Yeah. Now, how much is hundred million dollars? It's about that, slightly less than that. And that's what you're giving us. Yeah. And that's what was raised in three years. But for the marvel, Nko, the bridge is profitable by all accounts. Leakages aside, it is profitable. Why would you recycle a profitable entity? Why? Why would you recycle a What do you think is the motivation for all of this? Take my along. I don't want to second guess them. All I'm saying is be transparent with us. Tell us why you are doing these things and how you are going to do it with whom. Is it because we have a lot of projects going on and government was expecting a lot of money coming in and some of the projects are hanging there. They need cash to inject and pay this. But is that, is that, could that or be is a it, reason? Or, or is it because the government is cash trapped? Mm. So, making recycling this thing to put into other entities is one thing. Yeah. But if you are cash trapped, what do you do? What do you do? <coughs> Excuse me. Should government be selling entities in order to pay salaries? Because Gamtel here, well, yeah. Should should government be selling Gamtel because it cannot pay the salaries? Why not just restructure Gamtel? He put some money back into it to make it sustainable, to make it profitable, and then give the employees a stake in it until a solution more it. Before you sell Gamtel, Adi Gamtel Doku Lalabang, Ya Doku. They have a stake in it, they have dividends being paid to them at the end of every year. You see how they will turn around Gambia. Gambia, yeah. In other countries, that's the best practice. Mm. Indigenize it. Give it to people who can run it. But 
you have to help them organize themselves. You just don't say to them, okay, Gamtel staff, come, we are going to uh, privatize this thing, but we're going to do it with you guys. Here, do what you need to do. No, you help them put administrative and management structures in place. You put some financing behind that mm -hmm. to make it profitable. Yeah. And you even uh, agree with them on, uh, on achievables, even if it is on a quarter basis. Mm -hmm. Quarterly, you will have to produce X amount of dollars. Yeah. Yearly, this is what is going to happen. By year five, if you guys want to, you can expand into other things or you decide as the owners to privatize it. Those are the solutions. And some of them are involved in them. Mm. That was how they do That's it. how they do it. You empower people, you empower employees, and you create wealth for them. Talking about employers and employees and salaries, government minister, the minister also told National Assembly members that four ministries alone spent Nine hundred and fifty, almost a billion dollars is yeah. on salaries, on emoluments. emoluments alone, mm. uh, emoluments and interest payments. Yes, he said the over the overturn expenditure in personal emoluments can be attributed mainly to the foreign ministry, basic education mm -hmm. four hundred and seventy million, mm -hmm. foreign affairs three hundred and twenty, mm -hmm. Ministry of Interior eighty three million, and Ministry of Health eighty one million. Yeah. we should be having more in health. <laughs> than the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Why are we having this much money? On, I can understand Ministry of Basic Education. Mm. I can understand health. Ministry of Health. Mm. But the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, 320 million, triple, tripled, or even four times higher than the Ministry of Health. And I will go a bit further than that. Yeah. I will say, uh, why should the president's office have a budget of 800 million Gambian dollars plus. Mm. Yeah. Hmm? Why should the Ministry of Finance have a budget of 2 billion? Why should foreign affairs have a budget of what, 2 billion? Or slightly less than 2 billion? Between those three entities alone, if you start chopping the fat out of it, Mm. You can do a bunch of things on it. It will be in the millions of dollars. In case I have stopped calculating these things because I keep walking around with figures in my head uh, on things that I don't understand. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, yeah. Like I like I said earlier, our interest payments. The interest payments on our national debt is about seven billion. Mm -hmm. Now, the the budgets for health, education, agriculture combined is less than seven billion. Yes. But you have a case where the finance ministry, which is a non-productive ministry, mm -hmm. it doesn't produce anything. Anything. It's given, what, two billion. The, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, again, one mm -hmm. point something billion, or, or close to two billion. Mm -hmm. Now, for, for foreign affairs, you can say, okay, uh, the, the, the rate at which the new embassies were created and their staffing yeah. accounts for that. Mm -hmm. But it begs the question, do we really need that? Do we really need all those embassies? Those embassies. What are they bringing to the country? Yes. In, 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 in the First Republic, Jawara's time, mm -hmm. you had an ambassador in Morocco that covers half of the Arab world. Mm -hmm. You had an ambassador uh, in, in, uh, in America that covers the U.S., uh, Mexico, and Canada. Now, in the current setup, mm -hmm. you have an embassy in London, uh, Paris, mm -hmm. Brussels, Russia, mm -hmm. Spain. Five embassies in Europe. The same Europe, Europe. one Europe. One yeah. Europe. Mm -hmm. Now, for a small country with a, with a GDP of around $3 billion, mm -hmm. why would you need that many embassies around? Why don't you cluster those embassies, let's say, uh, for West Africa, you have one embassy in Nigeria or Ghana or whatever, but it covers Anglophone. And then you have another one, the Moroccan one, used to cover Fran most of the Francophone countries. Mm -hmm. uh, Morocco, Tunisia, uh, Libya, Algeria, Egypt. Now, if you have one embassy in West Africa, 
that is covering all of West Africa or half of West Africa, and you divide it into the other lingua franca, French, mm -hmm. uh, that is understood. But we cannot have embassies in all of these countries that are not self-sustaining. Mm -hmm. your, your, your question was, what are they bringing in? Yeah. We don't know, because tangibly, they don't tell us what each embassy embassy's cost is. We just have a global figure. We just have a global figure. Uh, I know I know a country I have worked in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the foreign minister had to go to cabinet to report on which embassies brought in direct foreign investments and which do not. And based on that, they restructured their foreign service. I mean, the, the, former, the former vice president said we don't have a foreign policy. Well. He said we don't have a functional <laughs> foreign policy. He was a serving vice president, and I have not seen any um, rebuttal to, to that well, since then. Barara, Barara, Barara is, a, is a straight arrow. I, I have known the guy mm. for years. I, I have enormous respect for him. Um, I wasn't surprised he said those things. And I wasn't surprised he said also it cannot be business as usual. But when he said that, Abetonya adulatom, Befani adulatom, Kain na kumbur, yo linga wahni, fongane dinga survive. He laughed. He said, we used to talk about these things in early 1990s, 91, 92. Because at the UN, local UNDP office here, yeah. I was in charge of the World Bank Education uh, Project. Mm -hmm. And we hired Badara as the project okay. manager, mm -hmm. put him in the Ministry of Education. That's how far back yeah. uh, we go to. I've known him to, to, to be a straight shooter. And he laughed. He says, but you remember we used to talk about this. He says, now the crunch has come. We have to go to the public okay. domain for it. And I said to him, good luck. And let's see how long you last. Wow. So Interesting. Interesting. Now, still on the National Assembly, one interesting bill that I found to be very interesting <laughs> is the cybercrime law to empower police ISIS to intercept communication. Yeah. <laughs> you see, I'm not a fan of Minister Ba. I haven't seen what he has done since he came at the Digital Ministry. Yeah. He hardly speaks. People that don't speak, you know, that, that sends a different message for me. But this bill, what use is this bill for ISIS and police to intercept communications? Another thing that this bill seeks to do, the bill also intends to criminalize the following, uh, the following using a computer system to intend to harm or, sp or spread false news or information mm. against a person, mm -hmm. production of uh, production of uh, production, possession, transmission, and distribution, downloading, child pornography, and others. But false news, what determines what is false news? But that is at the crux of the bill. The, this bill is what dictators would do. Hmm. Who you know, determines what is false news? You know what? It's subjective. Subjective. It's very subjective. Yeah. What is false news to you may be real news to me. Yeah. And the fact that they're saying internet generated. Yes. They're trying to social us the media, online media. Social media because and online, online entities, entities. Like yours. As us. You know. That's the this, only way you can ask. This is the stuff dictators do. Hmm. You, know, you know, I always say uh, President Barrow needs to watch out for who are around him yeah. and who he listens to. And my thing is when these I, when, people like these people who are educated in the United States, they know the extent of democracy. They can never do these things in the U.S. Mm. But they come to the Gambia and sell these ideas to our officials and acting all innocent. But where the countries that they were educated in, these kind of extremist laws are not there. And that is what upsets me most about some of these intellectuals we have in, in position. It's all relative, isn't it? It's all relative. I keep saying to President Barrow, this is not politics. Nkafo dauda ko anyanta hakilo tula molu menu baabala. You know this kind of laws. Yeah. It's the intention is to suppress people. Yeah. The intention is to stifle free speech. 
And the intention is to make sure that whoever is critical of the government of the day, yeah. they have a mechanism, to, a legal mechanism to deal with to you. To deal with you. Now, mm -hmm. for somebody who fought to dislodge a dictator, mm -hmm. ah, this is going too far. Baro led us to fight a dictator, yeah. dislodge that dictator because of things like this. Now, to, see, to say that seven years later, Baro is transgressing or digressing uh, back to those ways that he fought and dislodged, mm -hmm. I cannot comprehend. Yalong take a memo. Politics aside, mm -hmm. if you are a foreign leader mm -hmm. or, or if you are a national leader, yeah. three things you watch out for. Mm -hmm. uh, things that cannot withstand the rigors of uh, uh, scrutiny. Mm -hmm. You yeah. try to run away from that. Yeah. Anything that cannot withstand the rigors of scrutiny, mm -hmm. you run away from that. Yeah. Anything that can be uh, described as not transparent, not open, mm -hmm. you run away from, from that. that. Yeah. Anything that says trample on the rights of individuals, mm -hmm. you run away from. <coughs> mm -hmm. Excuse me. People who push you in that direction, you shouldn't listen to. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, I think Barrow wants to leave this presidency and live in this country happily ever after. Mm. But if you pass laws like this, yeah. and you go and do the things that this law says you cannot do, and you lock people up, you lock businesses, you put businesses out of, out of business, do you think you can happily live happily there after with those people? I have no idea. There is life after the presidency, but it depends on your actions. Mm. Now, look at what is happening in our neighboring country. Senegal. Senegal. That's my next topic. Look at what is happening there. Final, at least they go, it seems like they will be going to election on the 24th. Yes. And But why do you think up to now people are skeptical about even that because Maki has perfected the art of machiavellian politics mm. he's been manipulating senegalese for 12 years as president yeah every time he's in a tough spot he calls for a national dialogue yeah and he gets out of it now this time around you have a very strong independent resourced institution in the constitutional council i say no 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 what you are doing is unconstitutional and people were very skeptical that even that uh, con uh, constitutional council will take the stance that it has taken. Yeah. Because they are all his appointees. Yes. But, you know, you know I, I, I tell people I'm, a, I'm an eternal optimist. Mm. I believe in the opt optimism of people's inherent goodness. Mm -hmm. These guys, seven judges, they just sat and said, it's gone too far. Enough, of, enough, enough is, is enough. enough. Let's put the country back on track. track. Now, when they came out and say, what you have done is unconstitutional. Uh, you can extend your mandate. Yeah, some, some Senegalese colleagues of mine in the UN system, we, we talk. Mm -hmm. And one of them says to me, Grant, I said, but your constitutional council is doing a good job. He says, for now. For now. He says, we'll go to the crunch. When they take the decision that will take Senegal out of this mess, I will call you and tell you, yes, they have a backbone. Wow. He says to me, at least in our governance support to our countries, yeah. we tell them there is nothing more important than strong, independent, well-resourced institutions. It's not the institutions that do it. Yeah. It's the people in the institutions who will stand up and say, as a matter of principle, this cannot go on. This cannot go on. As a matter of law, it cannot go on. In this case, they, were, they had a perfect reason to say, what you are doing is unconstitutional. You cannot extend your mandate by one day. Along those two are very clear. Yeah. The third clarity is, 
you cannot you cannot uh, hold the elections in after April 7th. After April 7th. It has to be. It has even to be. Even though it is Ramadan, is going to happen in yeah, Ramadan. It, it, you know. Now, nobody expected the Constitutional Council to, to do No, nobody expected but that. But they, they stunned everybody. But they could not have... If it even so, so no. <coughs> no. They, yeah. But that's why it, it, we say strong institutions. Strong institutions. But I keep qualifying that to say strong institutions that have men and women of principle. Principle. And professionalism in them. Mm -hmm. If you don't have those kinds of... Uh, people in institutions, mm -hmm. that's when institutions go wrong. Yeah. So these guys have shown uh, the whole world yeah. that what our president is doing is not right, and we're not going to go with him on that. Now, I, I looked at the different constitutions in Francophone Africa. Yeah. All of them, if most of them, if not all of them, have this... Uh, clause that says that um, if the president is incapacitated, is not there, the president of the National Assembly takes over. Takes over. Mm -hmm. In the Senegalese constitution, that's not there. Oh, I thought they said yes, the, the National Assembly prospers, yeah. It's not there. Kunung, I, I, Kunung and I was looking at this thing, and this person who called me, I asked him, he says, Maki changed that thing. When did he change that, though? I think the last time the new constitution from Koke. Yeah, because uh, I when, still... when he 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 abolished the post of prime minister. Mm -hmm. Yala, okay, yes, the yes, I will change. Yes, process. I know that. Yes, and then he brought it back. Does, that means it all fall more more long for because long. I see all analysts saying Ko, because Maki can still decide to resign today. Yes, if he resigns, there's everyone is saying, "Mam Job, uh, the, the speaker will no. take over." I found out no. If he resigns, the Constitutional Court will appoint an interim person with a specific time frame for how elections ought to be held. Now, if you look at the other Francophone countries, if the president is not there, like right now, mm -hmm. the president of the National Assembly ascends to the presidency for 90 days, and in those 90 days, he has to call an election. And they said for them it's between 60 to 90 days for the National 90 Assembly? 90 days maximum. Wow, 60 to, yeah. But, yeah. but in this case, I'm saying the Constitutional Council says, go. If you cannot go, we are going to get somebody. Il a, il a success on Montclair. Wow, interesting. Interesting. So um, what we also saw, Wednesday was a very interesting Wednesday. Yeah. Um, they voted in the amnesty law. Mm. And a lot of people say, I see on the French media caricaturing him, yeah. asking him, who is the amnesty for? Yeah. Because the positive people say, we don't want it. Mm. Let, leave, leave us in jail. Mm. Or release us the way you, uh, you, captured, you us captured us. Because mm. none of us have gone to, uh, um, <laughs> to, to court about all of these things. Yep. They, they, they filed the, the, the Usman Sonko's charges are the same as Farid Oketa's charges. Mm terrorism for special, yep. uh, all of these, all of you call it 20 yep. something, but yep. Faliru has been released without anything. Yep. Usman and Basiru are still in jail. Mm. Some of the charges that Faliru was even charged for, when they were happening, he was in jail. Yeah. So they went to, and I, I wrote this on my Facebook, I have never in my wildest dream thought National Assembly members of Beno Bokayakar will be defending Usman Sonko this much to the point to say he needs to be released to go to his family. Mm. That's why we're voting for this amnesty law. Do you think that amnesty was really for Usman and his team? Was it for Maki himself and his family? Well, did the, the, the amnesty law make particular reference to Sonko and or Jumai Fai? It didn't, it didn't, it didn't make, didn't. did it? No, it, didn't. it just talked about... It's a, it's a blanket amnesty. Yeah, it talked about incidences. Now, yeah. If... if mm -hmm. The amnesty is supposed to calm things down yeah. in the country, as Maki claims. Mm -hmm. The first thing he should have done before sending it to parliament is to release these guys. Yes. And then send the thing to parliament. Mm. As it is, I'm with those who think uh, it's like the, the, the indemnity clause in our 1997 constitution. Uh, he's indemnifying himself. Now, the question then becomes, will it work? 
if a new government comes you can repeal it and repeals use that the clause same national assembly and and repeals that clause and goes after you like they have gone uh, after Yankuba and Co yeah. who failed to yeah. uh, collaborate with the TRRC it can happen yeah so that's why I keep saying everything is relative the 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 cynics out there mm -hmm. are saying no no he he just wants to absolve himself of the responsibility of those who died because at the end of the day they died under his watch yeah and somebody will have to be accounting, accounting for, that. for that yeah and then the security forces the security service are going to have to tell him hey muse president <laughs> don't go like that give us some protection this is why the amnesty the, the indemnity clause was put into the 1997 constitution because the junta they were concerned about what is going to happen to them in case a future government comes into power they haven't calculated that that future government can repeal that clause and still go after them mm. now what is interesting in in, in terms of comparison mm -hmm. in our own situation here Yankuba is in prison. He's sentenced for what? Life? Yeah. What, yeah but the other, part, the other junta members are coming in and out of the country. Yeah. No accountability there. So everything is relative. I keep saying everything is relative. Everything is relative. But if you are a wise thinker, you have to realize that, hey, the things that I'm doing today are going to either haunt me in the future mm -hmm. or they're going to give me a perfect peace of mind. The choice is you, the, the choice individual. Is you. With all of these things that happened, I keep saying the impact of Senegalese elections on Gambia. Number one, uh, you know, our electricity, you know, is outsourced. Our, Even our internet. Our internet, our state house, you know, security. Mm. Um, basically, and other things we don't know. We don't about. know. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, I say this: I can understand why the borough administrative administration will be very much happy if a Maki successor comes in, succeeds. because um, you know it seems at the beginning it might look like those things will stay in place until anything mm -hmm. is figured out. Mm -hmm. But if it's a passive government. We have seen a very radical approach to them, um, knowing that Usman is from Kazamas, uh, the way the Senegalese soldiers are placed in Kazamas, making it uncomfortable for the people of uh, Fonyi and Kazamas, will that still exist? Will all this support, all this collaboration that we have in the electricity and other sectors, will those exist? Will we have that kind of collaboration? Because you know, Usman is more of a nationalistic guy. Very, he's a pan-Africanist, of course, but very, very radical in thinking. And these are the two people. They are, these are the two governments you see. I mean, they are the front runners. Everybody sees. They it's either win. Amadouba mm -hmm. or Pastef. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm more inclined to say it's Pastef. But if any, if if Pastef wins, how? What is in there for Gambia? Will we have a good relationship based on all these things that Maki's government I, is providing? I, 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 I honestly hope so. And you know why I say I honestly hope so? Mm -hmm. Usman has said three different times, mm -hmm. and I've said this in another platform. He has said three different times yeah. that he has no interest in the Gambia. Mm -hmm. He has no interest in Guinea-Bissau. What he's concerned about is to get Senegal to move to the level that he thinks it should move. Mm. The second time he mentioned it, he says, you guys keep telling me Gambi de Fatuti, Gambi, Gambia Doyatal. He says, in the bigger context of things, Hani Senegal Doyatal. In that regard, the most viable country in West Africa is Nigeria and Cote d'Ivoire. Mm. So if we go by your logic, the Anglophones should just stick with Nigeria, form one federation, and the Francophones stick with Cote d'Ivoire, form another federation, and see what difference that, that is going to make. That was when I realized that this guy's thinking is way above the average individual. Yeah. Now, to, to your question, 
will the relationship remain the same thing? We have to learn from history. Do you recall when the Senegambia Confederation was abrogated by Jawara? What did Abdul Juf do? Didn't he pull out the Senegalese soldiers, soldiers that were guarding Jawara? Yeah, he did. Without notice. He didn't even have the courtesy to say, Mbor, I'm taking my men out. He just gave an order, they started going out. At that time, Modnjai was the commander in Farafen. Mm -hmm. I recall it distinctly. Mm. They called Modnjai to come and secure the state house. Now, if we learn something from that, we should be making contingencies to say whoever comes, whether it's Bar or the Pastev guys, yeah. whoever comes, we should be ready to step in to secure our president. And also economically, there's so much that we're depending on Senegal. What should be, at this point, what should be government approach as to Senegal goes to election 24, if nothing happens? Uh, you know, people are saying we cannot still guarantee. But <laughs> <laughs> if they if they go to election and whether first round or second, there's going to be definitely going to be, be a new government. Yeah. Even Amadouba, you never yeah. know. Oh. So what should be, at this point, what should be government preoccupying doing when it comes to Senegal, Gambia but, but approach? I, I, I said it in my last appearance here. I said we should be doing contingency planning Okay. for three scenarios. One, how do we secure our president and state house? Mm -hmm. And literally the country. Because the Senegalese are in different locations. Yes. The Ghanaians are in different locations. Mm -hmm. And I think the Nigerians. The Nigerians also, yes. yeah. So we should have a contingency on how to secure our country. Mm -hmm. the, the second imperative would be, in terms of our dependence on Senegal, mm -hmm. what are the fundamental things that we could do that will assert our sovereignty? And I'm not talking sovereignty in a radical way. Mm -hmm. I'm talking sovereignty in terms of your survivability in the event that they pull the rug from oh. from underneath you. Mm. Now, if you go to Farafeji, Soma, uh, some of the Lumos in uh, Brikama Bar Wasu, mm -hmm. the medium of exchange is the, is the safer. Yeah. Now, if you want to cross, you cross into Senegal. You have to declare what dialysis you have. Mm -hmm. If you don't declare and they decide to search you and see it, you are in trouble. So we have to go back to our legal framework, and that is the medium of exchange in this country is the dollar. Whoever brings in any other foreign currency, you declare it, isn't it? Yeah. Why is Senegalese not declaring the SEFA when they enter here? And they will go to the marketplace and negotiate with you in SEFA. I, I just went around three, four days ago, I went all the way around Soma, Message uh, in mm -hmm. everywhere I go to. Yeah. If you don't have the safer, forget it. If you have the dollar, that's even better. If you have the euro, that's even better. Pound sterling, they don't know anything about that. Mm. So we can do those basic things: secure ourselves, assert uh, the legal because this is not new. Mm -hmm. the, the 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 legal tender in the Gambia is the dollar. It's on our currency. Yeah. So let's enforce that. And the third thing is the electricity. Yeah. Now, the reason why I keep saying uh, transparency, 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 I don't know who knows what is in the agreement that NAWEC signed with Senelec. I don't know. I don't know at all. I don't know whether that agreement was done within the framework of the AU's power grid network or even ECOWAS's power grid network. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I hope, I hope that they took all of those into consideration when they were signing this thing with Senegal. Otherwise, our on and off switch button will be somewhere in Senegal that will for be. our electricity. And, and that, that is, is disastrous. That is disastrous. Now, if, the, if there is a fourth contingency, mm -hmm. that should actually involve the National Disaster Management Agency to say, we need to put assets uh, to locations that we think will have an influx of 
potentially people who will run away from any potential conflict mm -hmm. uh, post post election or uh, pre election or post election conflict. We 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 position assets that can absorb those numbers of people, and I'm saying that because we need to learn from our own experience. When somebody stood here and said, Adam Baro is not going to be sworn in in this country, pandemonium ensued. What happened? Senegal opened their doors to us. To us, yeah. And I, I know because I was somewhere and I was monitoring, I was part of the team that they were consulting on various things. I knew that the Senegalese Red Cross was ready to help people. Now, some of you guys who have networks in Dakar manage to do it on your own, or if you have money, you go and rent things. But the fact is there, there will be a bunch of people who cannot do that. Yeah. And we should be, we should be positioned to, to, to help those people settle down uh, neatly, especially in the Kasamas uh, border areas. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. I, 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 we have a lot of issues to deal with. We have a lot of issues to deal And finally, do you think, who do you think will be in Senegal? Who, who do you think is the favorite right now, looking at what is happening, looking at the, you know, I mean, who, who do you think? Well, the Constitutional Council says the election must be held before... The, it is 24th. It's confirmed. Ha. What yeah. can for? Ha. Because not beyond his term. Yeah. Now, and the, the other thing they said in that same judicial decision yeah. is to say with the candidates that we have cleared. That's the 19 candidates. That's now. the 19 candidates. Yeah. Now, in those candidates, yeah. I expect Jumai to win. Jumai? Yes. But, are you, you, but you're expecting they will go second round, right? If it was Usman, it will end on first round. It was, um, with Jumai, you can say it may go second, second round. round. Wow. Uh, after the first round, they will have to do some coalition negotiations, yeah. like Senegal always but does. But you, you see Jomai winning. But I see, I see him winning. Wow. Interesting. Not, not in margins that Usman would have. Yeah. Some uh, people said, though, Jomai's win is way clearer than Usman's for number one. Mm. You know, a lot of people see Usman nitty fit now because he's always out there, <laughs> very vocal and very controversial. Even people, even though people will tell you naturally he's not like that, but you know if somebody is pushed to the wall, so there are people, a group of people who really don't like him, because of all of that. You don't have that for Jomai. So Usman's base that is there, the pastef and Usman base is already there for Jomai, mm -hmm. but also Jomai brings in a fresh yeah. people who don't yeah. really like Usman, but they think Jomai is a calmer person. Mm -hmm. Don't you think that will have an effect in the election? But you uh, still think Jomai? I, I still think Jomai will win. Mm -hmm. But now, it, I, I had these arguments on, yeah. on different platforms on on um, on Usman. Yeah, Niti Fitnala and all yeah. of that. Us Usman, by his words, if you listen to, to him, him, yeah, he's not a person who is conflictual. Na 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 nim bangkol kam. Yeah, uh, we have a tendency to label. Yeah. Usman has been labeled as a radical, mm -hmm. and radicalism is equated with fitna. Fitna. But if you listen to what he says, Tonya, Tonya Molem, Nanyim Banko Hanijang, Nika Tonya for a Kafolo Konyin, Abe conflict Lenatika. If you are in a political party and you are somebody who stands up and says, No, no, Nte Fe, Nine Nyantakel, if that is against somebody's agenda, yeah. Yeah. you are labeled. Yes. Now, the labeling comes with a debate. Mm. When they lose the debate, they start attacking you personally and insulting you. Usman manke fit na moti. Tonya amole waka tonya alaf. Nanyin du bankol kam malafi tonya Let us just call a spade a spade. Wow. I, I wanted to bring some politics, but I'm saying that I have, I'll, you know, your party. Let's just, well, final question. UDP, we saw that you have a new campaign manager. I mean, you know, Karafa is bounced back as the campaign manager mm -hmm. after, you know, Sawali left. Um, it was a very, very intense yeah. process. Mm -hmm. uh, Pamane and Karafa, and, mm -hmm. you know, 
I don't know. It seems like it was a very crazy process. But I think I, I spoke to some of your people and they said, oh, yeah, don't move democracy, multi. You know, and Kafeng Obeke, multi. So even little things like that, you know, it brings a lot of hype. But other party leader, I saw him at the closing remarks. I'm thinking, Dabo is signaling that he's going to run again in 2026. But is there something wrong with that? <sighs> he tried so many times. But is there something Uncle wrong Rale, with that? Dabo run so many times. Go. Ask my, answer my question. Is there something wrong with him wanting to run? No. Now, my thing is, I think a lot of people say this. Mm. You, if you guys are saying this is how democratic your party is, mm. the United Democratic Party, mm. we have seen so many intellectuals, mm. so many capable people who can run that party. Mm. And Why, the country. And the country. Mm. Why does it have to be double? If he has tried four or five times, can you, the, you, are, you guys are basically telling us that he is the only qualified person no, in that party. We said no such thing. No, yes, that's what you're demonstrating. No. If he is going to be your, since the inception of the party up till now, he's the only candidate, that only shows that he's the only qualified person who can run this country. Why are you not using but, the same standard on Halifa? And the same standard. Well, Halifa is not running anymore. Did he tell you? That? Yes, Halifa said he's not. But how many times has he run? But he is not anymore. How many times? But has he's he run? not now. He's not. Halifa was running for the presidency of this country since I was in high school. But he's not running anymore. So whatever it is, he's your, not running. Your argument doesn't hold. He, it does. He's not running anymore. Where where, where we are different with? Why you does guys? it have to be double again? Why why not? Why? Give me it's, reason. Why should it but, be but him? You started your, I'm asking the question. You, you sta I'm also asking. No, but you. I should. I'm not. Doing, <laughs> I don't answer questions. I'm, I'm, I'm I ask. ask I don't answer. I ask. I'm going to ask you. My, I want to. Started, I want justification. No, you started this this topic with Chocho Ketale, Paul Kanditale. You spoke to some of our people. They say this is normal for us. It's a democratic institution. Yeah. Don't you think political parties should actually compete for internal positions? Well, how, yeah, that is good. But how democratic is but, that? But Allah that process me me na pur da weke candidate or process or? It's the same because, process. I, it's the same. Angular, how democratic is that process? Twenty twenty six seater. More more be UDP. Ilafta party ila flag bearer ship tala party. You are free to contest. And it you and I know ko nin dabo kati ko nola. Minu be la fita volte da malala. Kukula ni volwe kiri. That's not democratic. Namel londro. Wole mu nti alafta men na wote kela. Mun lafta mu nela. Alko dabo is not electable. Alko dabo keba. You saw how Jo. No, I don't demo for nti. I always argue nti. Yaje tini bu kabin tini bu lota. Ah. I was the only one who was supporting and campaigning for Tinubu in Gambia. On social media, I love him. I believed in what he did in Lagos. I saw it and I said, he can do something for Nigeria. So for me, age is not the issue. Yes, age is For me, age is not the issue. If the mind works. It happens. But for me, I'm looking at it from a different angle. Dabo ran for what, four times? Kabring... Uh, yes. So I think three, Atola three Patio, especially Alla Patio, no mm. four, Alla Patio, mm. Atola Patio, Al Kamin Bay for Momin Baby Alla Patio. Mm. Momin Baby, capable Momin Baby J. Mm. Momin Baby UDP Connor. Mm. Ming that way I try seeing a killing full of Sabanana, I'm a walk. Mm. You know, at least there should so, be change. So therefore, now, now I think we should just say, okay. Now, I thought, I mean, okay, just not that fly, come say, that it's about time we hang the boots. Am I, am I right so to, to contest? No, we should tell him it's about time we hang the boots. Uh, Mr. Far, Dow. As, as far as I am concerned. My friend, it's time to hang the boots. Yes, He's I'm my friend. I don't know if I'm not going to be a I tell people, people call you UDP. No, I don't want UDP. I don't want Mr. I love the man. He's a great guy. I love him. And everybody knows that. I don't shy away from that. But, you but, know, sometimes but let's, as a, let's, somebody let's, that I care for and love, I think, you know, Politico is very painful. He has gone through so much. Physically, health-wise, mentally, I don't want to put him through that. Also. Financially, yeah. what I that man has gone through. I don't think you know. I don't think we are in disagreement about. Oh, all of he has sacrificed you know so where, much. We, you know where That's we, why Anthony Moida woman can come from because of all the things that he went through. Menuka, it, menuka ama, yeah. Mira back, Nike mira all the ama. things that he went through. But let's go back to your original statement. Uh -huh. Campaign manager position became vacant. Uh -huh. A vacancy was announced mm -hmm. and people applied. Ha. 
in this case it was Pamane and, and Karafa. Karafa Sonko. Yes. And they both come from Nyomi. Yeah. They campaign mm -hmm. like nobody's yes, business. Yes, they all, yes. It was tense. And the election was transparent because yes. Aketa Mobe Nyara, Nyara. Nyara. Okay. Karafa won. Yeah. The party clusters around him. Mm -hmm. The point to be made is, mm -hmm. in a democratic institution, you should let people choose who leads them. Okay. Honey, Angola. if you, if you, if you, Angola, Ninda Wakale Lola, Mobi, Nanga for Min Vela Fring, Tinta Yantamata UDP, Ninda Yankuba Dago Vela Fring, Lamin Sane, Abela Fring, okay, Tali Ben Suda, Abela Fring, Rohilo, Abela Fring, Hani Abolusani, Abela Fring, Nin Lumin Dabo Co, at the Mekala candidate of the Nani Molu Minfoy, Kilin Tada Malala. Go I, don't, asafe. I, don't, I don't think asafe, killing ta da malala. So that alone is I you know don't. that alone mo democracy must not because he you know be can be courtesy means sambalaka. No, and because you know, number one as an elderly states person, number two, Bunyami Bakam Patiokang, number three as the secretary general and you know but, but, and more but, but you are, so you are, you are, you are missing the biggest ingredient in all of this. What is that? The choice of the people. <sighs> That's what you are missing. For the left half of the country, Usenu man 2021 election or win? Ah, more I see come I win. Ha, I see a win. I see a win. I see a win. Ha, until go I win le. Ah, le win. Anuna evidence men the Supreme Court la. Ha, our lawyers say the evidence is incontrovertible. Ah, Supreme Court for a man son told me I win. Man son I win. Man told you I win. So which I understand. So, but in the final, in the final election tabulation monitoring, how long a command center sent? Ha. We won that election. Ah, but I. Mo lebe Adamo Baroba men kafu. He won that election. I see Kalma win. So yeah, long official results. So that. But you are that does not negate from the fact that he is loved. To be the people's choice. He loved. Mo lebe Atombo. Mo lebe Akanole. Nte. I don't have any issues with him running so long as his head is working and his health allows him. Yeah, he's a strong man. Yeah. He's a strong man. And, and he's strong, sharp also. Hands down, of course. He's hands sharp. down. But it's not a man. 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 It's not a See that money, not a coil left, and they are genuine. But not a common tackle, and we are moving as a fintina. And that would have been very interesting. Nin Daboko, I take a manta lola, Nin Lulu Benanang, a compete in the internal democracy, the UDP Kono, UDP and the victory from Bukata Monia Fatu, Nin Koto Senu Kate Lola. I can you moment bear for ten. Baby, UDP lamp grassroots be clustered around one person. No one person sort of that. Menu man left away can be branch out later. I'm telling you for it. Yeah, so yeah, it's still. No, it's still. It's still a political. You can, you can, you can do political kono monela. They have an interest. But I told you, generally, all the people can branch off. Imira Jela. Yeah. Iko, Iko. Ha. Iko Rohimaliklo. Ha. Talib. Ha. Eh, Yankubada. Yankubada. Lamin San. Lamin San. Amadou San. Amadou San. Uh -huh. And in Juma. What are you looking for? Yo, the missile is not what I was saying. Uh -huh. I'm not laughing. Uh huh. You look back on your life. Ha. You did feel a tradition moment. Uh huh. Because the moment you pull a bunko, no, you can't negotiate. Ali kacha ali mo kili efinti. Ha. Ni o mo kili o finti tana. Uh huh. You don't know me and my life o mo kili ola. Uh huh. You be branch out lala. So you are not a stella. Not a stella. So is that bad? No, it, it's not bad. That's good for democracy. No, I mean, you can Ah, you mean okay? Be the halale. Ibe 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 la la nyinga ne song. Iman nama nyinga kama. Ma umoi ha. Nko. Ha. Eni mo lulo mem. Ha. Ni misalfe usenda boko ntelol. Ha. Nilbe saferoke. Ha. UDC UDP la traditional moment. Ibe na ekacha. Yesi bungo na ekacha dakor mo kile. Ha. Il a Dalilolfo. Ha. Ni finti tebe report la mole. Dalilolo me ati ne o mo kili umuta. Ibe wale fola. Ha. Now ni o ni o be. Kom ni ko sign B. For example ni ko amadu sanelo. Ha. Ya mirako 
But you think they will not support the candidate? You have not allowed me to. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah. You have not allowed me to. Okay. I'll do bunko na le kacha. Ha. Na le kacha ta le me mutali afinti na. Mhm. Ni afinti ta na your report to the plenary. Yeah. Your endorse. Mhm. Jani election over kela. Ha. Menu BJ kani monu lo menu. Ha. Dolte la fila wala. Ise la fila wala. Ha. Ni mala fu wala. Ha. They have two options. Is to go. Is to go or to remain. And you think they will go. I think they will go. You think they will go? I think they will go. And that's not good for your party. Why, why is it not good for, for the party? Pillars it's, leaving. It's, it's democracy. Who says pillars are leaving? They are pillars in for the party. Nene wafo, nko yoko, in another platform, nko, pati yole ka moke kuti. Ah. Momo ya amira ko, itele mu pati yola heart and pillar ti. But for Zima, I'm saying for now is is about time leadership changes. Okay, that that way, okay, secretary general, I'm saying. But if but if candidate, oh, I'll find. I'll find. It's about time changing. I'll mold the handy. Senior Jolle, Senior Jolle, up in Fenke, apply water run run for the president. But yeah, Uncle, times have changed. No, times have changed. Times have changed, Uncle Rare. Times have changed. Times have changed in as much as people want it to change. So but it's the people that vote. Is the people that vote too? But it's all like a carte of fire. It an interdam manta gajen di nol. Ala appeal to voters. Wole ba gajen. So what will that answer? And that will be able to. Ani nol nga me muta. Ha. Na na party leader. Ha. Na flag be aramu sen double. Wole ba tulbu. Ha. For 2026. For 2026. Yaman ko ide Baroko. Baroko sa ni la la ni akoto darong lapi. Nko. I will for that. Ni ala pina turneta keke ni. Yani mo ko nim baro nim dabo malo baro baro bital. Bar nim dabo lot. Akafole sa akafole sa ni ala ko. Nim da ko nim ko nim dabo malo atelo. Bar nim bar nim dabo lo tao. Abina ala biko salu ko ako mu easy right leg. Your own argument is longevity. Baro 2026 he would have served two terms. If that constitution was adopted, he could not stand. But yeah, what is it? Yeah, so therefore, what is it? As a free, I love, but it wasn't a free like a law. But Baro, yeah, Baro, Baro, no, but no, but no, Baro, Baro, yeah, Baro, you see the situation of man killing. Ibe killing. No, Baro, Baro, man, me, Baro, la pati be how long le? Baro, la situation left for No, but Baro, la pati, Baro, la pati, mumuneti. Baro, la Baro, la situation left for me. Jawa yata you see. Because I two time like that. Because two time. Not just two times. Look at the state of the country. Sometimes I never thought for any of Banco man better. Yeah. But that has that is not diff that is different from internal politics. No, no, no. In the party, what is that? Banco, Barola situation is serious. That we say not that. But it's a Barocco. Because people have a way of measuring his capacity to rule. They have no way of measuring this other man's capacity to rule because he mad yella. He served as vice president for some time, foreign affairs. How long? So we can measure those against between the two eighteen months. Yeah. What can you do in eighteen months? Okay. What can you do? So I quite tell that. I quite tell that. Twenty twenty six. That will battle. Nte. Ha. Nte nga wale muta. Wale bete wale. Ha. Nte nga wale muta. Ha. Ni mea no ekumolfo. Patio is structural esoto. Ni vacancy na teka announce le. Everybody is free to apply. For my long coming campaign manager position, I'm not a thing. Ni pa mane mang apply no. If Karafa would have gone on a post, Nin Karafa ma apply no. Pamane would have gone on a post. No, but the point... Alla patio, alla patio, faction no. Kabiru nga netalo, jangko no bi jambe dola. Ha! Nga doldi jang, nga doldi jang. Go, jambe. Ito, 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 Central Committee meeting lagi. Ha! Iman na janjambure Congress. Congress na mo, bide, wala tu kabit. Nga kalam tala. So, UDP is vibrant internally. UDP is self-generating. People just look at Uncle this Rale, from, a, from a very aesthetic point Uncle of view. Rale, we will come back to this. Ah. I hope, I hope uh, Simani Jatakenda and Taraje for 2026. 2026. I think UDP will surprise the hell out of a lot of people. Okay, until then. Mm. <laughs> yes. It's going to be interesting. Then I left them in for it. Um, Banco Futata Temboto, mm -hmm. Mea Longo, uh, 
fongasi nga kacha tonya um nyen alma mo do men folo fulanja men kuman mm mm-hmm. ako nda mawol tema nyanta kacha mm-hmm. political parties yeah uh ako nimman kacha mm banko kata nyame mm mm-hmm. amam betea Mm. Ako tol si menno kata football ka fo. Yeah. Bari tol karan nalu men kata different platforms to. We should always talk about the need for banko political parties to cluster and come together to solve the country's problems. problems. I I I will have for you. Ntebe men la fa la waka. Mhm. Ah two things. Mhm. One, science and nembota national dialogue. Mm. Yeah. Now a national dialogue ntol nga leta soto two days before the dialogue kafal nga invite national, national dialogue. dialogue we are not involved in the planning, planning and process yeah yeah mm mm-hmm. ye ye organizing committee soto mm mm-hmm. ntol mantara organizing committee to mm mm-hmm. mampati kota ngolo ba udp was not part of that organizing committee committee but han won ta tan dan kule mm mm-hmm. i participated with two of my colleagues mm mm-hmm. three in the political security stability committee i ended up chairing that committee mm. because we left our chair yeah we contributed positively in tel aviv mm-hmm. we contributed positively but a few days later muneketa hm eps muneketa muneketa eps la tie gas ba yeah yeah so you can't have a national dialogue that national dialogue mm mm-hmm. document as far as i know the final results haven't been among parefol among parefol molta ta meeting organized nte molka foko why are you guys defending aprc i will nah. defend it's them it's a moral issue it's a principle what for it it's a principle yeah it's a principle they mm. are a political they party. are They are movement yeah yeah application ke as far as what we saw on social media yeah. they have been approved they had a permit yes then the pam- permit was revoked for ya jamme buka it was not even revoked for ya jamme buka woleken yeah it was not even revoked so modo lu modo lu ka fonto len ya ka men ke mole woleke la kan jamme ti amula le because principle le baula tane ya ya bota jam principle le hana mam bo jam i mean ke wala tane mole a vote out yeah So it have for more like national dialogue okay, mm-hmm. to address our 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 issues mm-hmm. and you are not playing fair. No. Wala nang te katula for la ko. Mhm. Baro needs to be careful who is around him. Mhm. Whose advice he takes. Because sometimes ni ko lu ni keta. Mhm. Yes. Mole inspector general le kule. Mhm. But the final locus for accountability is the president. Ndeka mira jel. Yeah, yeah. Nientol kumandi UDP en kumandi national dialogue la daw dam bita jel because we have the capacity to contribute. We have ideas. Yes. Yalo nena nga folen ko UDP has become a thinking party. Mm. Nga folen be modolen kuma da konje mune mu thinking party. Nka nga miro soto le nga hakilo soto. Mhm. Nka mira le nga hakilo use. Yeah. So we have ideas we are a thinking party. we have certain levels of competency in our party that can be leveraged mhm bari tan ko mandile ben tulunna alnanga national dialogue and national dialogue you think ye mol tiagas then moy boal kono wole na pati leader attack yeah come on yeah and uh, that is the definitely a, a very high rank position in yes. in the party that was nte wala nan ko lafta men fo la mba fo wala mo nyinti ko we cannot all agree on the same things yeah for a differing opinion also yeah but in a differing opinion also to mm-hmm. no opinion respect ni la opinion respect kanan nen yeah nte nen mm mm-hmm. so masa go duma la saga yeah so ma respecte ma respect la respect la yeah why suñ ote national dialogue nañ wax national dialogue bi mu je we we plan a way forward on it Mm-hmm. and we assiduously follow it to the letter this political acrobatics has to stop it won't take the country anywhere There's no interest for it in our in our discussion it will not take the country it's anywhere. anywhere the problems we have are intractable now mm-hmm. you know somebody posted um, 
uh, a US aid report on the Gambia back in 88, 89, mm -hmm. when uh, the late Sir was finance minister, his ERP. Mm -hmm. That ERP is still being taught at Harvard University's International Institute of International Living as a best practice economic reform program. Wow. Honey sign. Honey so. It's not featuring in our curriculum. I responded. I said, yes, I, I know Malcolm. I know Malcolm. But I am forced to go to the because He was basically saying, this is the best ERP on record that we can be proud about. I, I commented, I said, you know what? Our country's current situation is worse than 1988-89 when the ERP was done. So we need to go through some reforms. Reforms ning amanya na kela ko aketa nyame o 88-89 because conditions have changed, mm -hmm. the world has changed. But you can do incremental reforms, reforms to make sure that a the economy comes back on track, b the economy is producing, c inflation is reduced. Mol bulo e koben. Mol bulo e koben. Yeah. Ni mol bulo me koben kubukata. Kubukata. Itelafta wala fala mola. Alenga nyo respect. Kana nyo neng. Mhm. Itela miro ni itela miro. Imagine. Imagine. Yep. Fengeta. Yep. On 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 yep. On on a particular issue here. Yes. I respect your viewpoint. Respect mine. Kana nyo neng. Yes, that's true. That's important. Kau ke mune kama pursa ma ningeje. Yeah. Thank you very much, Uncle Dara. It's always interesting to have you on the show and how look at all of these things. Uh, we thank you for always honoring our invitation uh, until we come your way another Thursday. Ramadan Mubarak to you all and Alamanda uh, Sunkarsia. Alma Mabia Jara, Sisa Kundan Kol, Wolka, even Domoro Lela. It's all among Sumang Fenkila Carola Bag. Okay, I don't have to get it. Thank you very much, Uncle Ali. Good night to you all. Good night. Good night. See you. Bye. We are happy to announce the launch of our new logo. We have evolved since our incorporation in 1997 and it is time to refresh our new look to reflect who we are today. Before I reveal our new look, however, walk with me while I take you through our journey of the last 25 years. Trust Bank was incorporated on July 3rd, 1997 and began operations on October 1st, 1997. Following the collapse of the parent company of its predecessor, Meridian, the CBG stepped in and recapitalized the bank and held the shares in trust, thus the name Trust Bank. In 1999, the first investors who responded to the IPO and paid $1.50 per share received their maiden dividend of 50 bututs per share. In 2000, the bank fully paid back its investment by declaring another dividend of $1.20 per share, making it a cumulative dividend per share of $1.70, which was 20 bututs above the purchase price. Between 2002 to date, share capital has increased from $27 million to $200 million, indicating that the bank has grown organically by plowing back profits to increase capital, while at the same time paying dividends to shareholders. The bank was listed on the Ghana Stock Exchange in November 2002, being the first ever cross-border listing in the sub-region. Now let's talk about awards. The bank was awarded the insignia of the National Order of the Republic of the Gambia, ORG, in the year 2010 by His Excellency the President of the Republic of the Gambia. During the past years, the bank has received so many national and international awards. Banker Magazine, six times. Global Finance, six times. Gambia Chamber of Commerce and Industry, five times. We began operations with three branches. Now, we have 18 branches and 20 ATMs and counting. On digital services, mobile app, check. 
Online banking, check. Transaction alerts, check. Watch this space, we've got more coming. Creating employment, yes, we've got that too. 400 and counting. And we take great care of our people too. Medical insurance, life insurance, private and state pensions, annual pilgrimages for both Muslims and Christians, training, yes, we do them all. One team, one family, one goal. That's the trust bank spirit. On corporate social responsibility, we have spent over $50 million in various courses. We care, and so we share. Over the years, we have paid over $1.6 billion to our shareholders, which translates to a whopping $20 per share and counting. Phenomenal returns for our shareholders who purchased at $1.50. Corporate taxes, over $1 billion is paid. Our journey started with a vision to create the kind of company that delivers quality services and innovative products with an inspired team dedicated to serving our customers, our environment, and our communities at large in the most caring manner. We remain fully committed to delivering excellent services to each of our stakeholders, customers, employees, shareholders, and partners. So, we remain true to who we have always been. As we look forward to greater achievements, we are rebranding to reflect who we are today and the future that we inspire. Our new logo has been designed to visually demonstrate our Gambian heritage and the sophisticated nature of the bank. We are moving away from the navy and gold-colored parallelogram-shaped logo to our baobab tree with a rising sun in the background. The striking outline of a baobab tree at sunrise is a familiar sight to anyone who has spent time in the Gambia. Our new logo and visual identity are inspired by our core values and spirit of being a pioneer in providing a unique banking experience. It is a completely new look that better matches the transformation we have made as a company. But we remain your trust bank. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my singular honor to present to you our new logo and corporate identity. The Gambia is proud to host the 15th OIC Summit on the 4th and 5th May 2024 the second largest gathering of world leaders, kings, presidents, rulers, prime ministers, along with delegates from 57 member countries of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, will gather in our beloved nation for this historic event. The theme of the summit is enhancing unity and solidarity through dialogue for sustainable development. It's a platform to foster cooperation, promote peace and drive sustainable development across the Ummah and the world at large. We call on all Gambians to unite and support the government as it strives to host a memorable and successful event. Let's showcase our hospitality, culture and the beauty of the Gambia to the world. Join us in making history. Let's stand together, united as one, to ensure the 15th OIC Summit in the Gambia is an event to remember. Together, we can make a